I was so excited because after I got into the MTC, the six weeks went by like in a flash. I was just like, oh, I'm done. Wait, where am I going? I'm going to Chile now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, so I remember packing my bags in the MTC and heading off um, to Chile. And it was so cool because um, my mission president was there at the gate. And this is one of my fondest moments of the mission is going to the gate after the airplane had landed and seeing them and then being embraced in their arms and shaking Presidente Oveso's hand. Um, but Hermano Oveso pulled me aside and said that she remembered me and that she was waiting for this moment to come. And I thought this is so cool because here they are. It was, I think it was about four months later and she still was waiting for me to come and to serve the Lord. And so that was a really cool experience. It was just so sweet because they, they were just like such happy people. And I remember when I got to Chile, we went to a meeting to be, you know, get situated and whatnot. And then we got to meet our trainers. <laughs> that was a fun one. So I remember all my group, they, you know, get their trainers. I was, okay, yeah. So my whole group was basically sitting like, you're in like, I don't know where you guys are going to be doing. Actually, I do know where you guys are going to be doing it most likely because I was serving in the same mission. Um, <laughs> but you're in this um, chapel. And so you're basically sitting on like the pews and then all the trainers are up top on. Nope. Nope. That. Nope. Nope. Uh, we got to switch it. So the trainers are sitting on the bottom on the pews and the new missionaries are sitting up top. I think trainers were definitely sitting in the pews and the new missionaries were sitting on like the podium, the stand area. And so they would be taught or we would have like a little meeting and then finally we got to meet our trainers. And I was just like looking at them like, okay, who is going to be my trainer? Um, I was very nervous because I was like, what if they are a native and they only speak Spanish? Um, what if I just don't understand them? Hello. <laughs> That's a very valid point. Um, <laughs> and so I remember all my missionary friends in the group, they were just getting their trainers one by one, one by one. And then finally, Presidente Oveso called my name and I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> that was the moment. <laughs> and um, my trainer was Hermana Dinini and she was from Bolivia. So that was a really fun experience because <laughs> I was like, yeah. She doesn't speak English. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> um, but it was an amazing experience because I was able to see my companion for the very first time and automatically I knew this was it. And then when he told me where I'd be serving, I'd be serving in an island called Chiloé. And if you get to serve that, I served in Ancud. And so that was, you would love that. That is a very beautiful island. And it was wonderful because I just, my home was from an island. And so I was just like, one island to the next. Oh, this is great. And going to Chiloé with her, we had to go through bus or go by a bus. We had to travel by bus and then take a little ferry to the island. And so that was really cool because during those like four to six hours of like just traveling, we got to get to know each other a little bit. She got to talk to me how like the mission was and how to see where my Spanish level was. And so, I mean, we were able to carry on a conversation because I knew Spanish from before the mission. Um, but even, for example, if you don't know Spanish before the mission, you will be able to communicate with your trainer. If, for example, you get a Latin companion because the spirit will be there and they will be guiding you to know what they're saying so you can figure out what to say back <laughs> and it's a great and wonderful thing um but i remember my first day with my trainer um we got to the house put everything down did not unpack we went straight to an appointment and i was just like sweet what's going on <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> but um we walked to our area and we walked to the house and we knocked on the door. Actually, in Chile, you don't knock. You get like a, there's like these like fences and then you like, nee, 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 and like, I don't know, you get a pen or a pencil and go through like the little gates. And then you say, like, alo. 
And so that's how they open up the doors. <laughs> and so we did that. And I was just like, whoa, that's different. You have to go, hello. <laughs> and instead of like knocking, which is, it, it, was, it's, it was different, but it was really cool. And so finally we go into this house and my companion, <laughs> Apparently she was telling me what we were be teaching. So we were just going to do something simple, a Book of Mormon story and like a principle to really get like the first basis of, um, of the missionary feel. <laughs> and it was actually really cool because <laughs> halfway during the lesson, I remember her just like sitting there, stopping. And then all of a sudden she'd look at me like, <laughs> your turn, <laughs> your turn to speak. And... I'm just like, my turn to speak. What was just said? Because I did not understand anything. <laughs> For the most part, because in Chiloé, their accents were crazy. They were different. And like studying Spanish all throughout middle school and high school, I was just like, okay, well, you know, I feel okay with the conversation. But going to Chiloé, I was like, what is this language? I did not study this. But it was so cool because even though um, you're sitting there in this lesson as a newbie and you're just like, I'm just going to go off with what the Spirit says in my head. <laughs> and so you're just, I honestly just picked a scripture, read it, and tried to explain the gist of it. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It was really fun because my companion was very helpful. She's like, I will go with the flow with what you just said. And we talked about it. And I just smiled and sat there, nodded my head and said yes. And I knew how to bear my testimony. So when she, I knew it was testimony time, when she sat there and looked at me again saying, okay, here's your cue. And I was like, yeah, okay. I'm just going to bear my testimony because that's how it is. <laughs> and so I did that. That was like my first lesson in the mission field. <laughs> It was wonderful because also it was really helpful since we were teaching a new convert at the time. And they were very understanding that I just got there and that I was trying my best to communicate with them. Because if they can feel that you're trying to communicate with them, they will show and reciprocate that love to you. Saying, yeah, you're trying, so I'm going to try. And then after a while, it just clicks. And you will have all these amazing experiences from the get go from day one <coughs> from the get go from day one all the way to the very end even up to now if you stay in contact with the people that you taught in the mission yeah that was really cool so yeah that was like my first day in the mission field it was wonderful 